Hi, I'm Jill Finley from Jill Lily Studio, and today I'm going to show you how I do applique. I use a method called applique the Jill Lily way, and it makes applique easy for anyone to do to get that beautiful hand-turned look with a nice puff to it, nice crisp edges, and makes it simple for you to do. Okay, we start with making a template. And to make a template, I use freezer paper, and I use four layers. So I take four sheets of freezer paper, put them all on my ironing surface with the shiny side facing down, and press them together with a hot iron. Now they're going to stick to your ironing surface, and then you can just pull it right off. So now the papers are fused together, and I just pull this off and I can cut my template out of this. I've already marked my template on this paper, so I'm going to cut out on this line. And I like using four layers of freezer paper because that gives you a nice heavy material. I've cut out my template from the freezer paper. And I put it on the back of my fabric, on the wrong side of the fabric with the shiny side facing down. And I just fuse it to the fabric with a hot iron. Then you're going to cut out around your template, leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance. This doesn't have to be exact. Just eyeball it, an approximation right there of a quarter inch. Now I have some tools for turning this edge over. First of all I use spray starch and you could use uh, spray sizing, you can use uh, starch or heavy starch, it doesn't matter. Just spray a little bit of it into the lid and then use an, uh, a stencil brush to apply that liquid to the seam allowance of your piece. Just on the seam allowance. Then I'm going to use um, an awl so that I don't get burned and a hot iron and just push this edge up over the top uh, with the flat part of your iron. I hold the piece with my awl so that I can manipulate it and I'm going to move my iron from the outside edge toward the center of the block. We want a nice smooth edge when we're done. I know you can't see that because my iron was in the way but I'm going to put my iron, leave my iron on there long enough just to dry the starch. Now you can see that my piece has a nice smooth edge. This piece is cooled off and I can just take the pattern, the template, out. And that can be reused. This, this will restick about 10 times. And my piece remains with the edges crisply folded and all the raw edges are on the inside. You see that I've got a little bit of extra fabric here at the tip. Whenever there's a sharp point on an applique piece, you'll have extra fabric sticking out. Don't cut that off. It's very simple to turn it under with your needle when you get to it but it's really hard to do if you cut it off. Now I'm going to glue it down with my apple glue. So I'll put a tiny drop of glue in the seam allowance, about every half inch or inch, and glue it to my block. Now there's a whole video about the apple glue. If you want more information on that, watch that video. It's titled Apple Glue on my website. Now my block is all glued down and my pieces are ready to stitch. Now I'm going to show you this uh, method a couple more times so that you get the idea. Okay, I've got a different shape cut out here and I'm going to put the shiny side down on my back of my fabric and press it until it sticks with a hot iron. Cut out around it approximately quarter inch away from the template so that we have a seam allowance to turn. And remember that this is doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, then I use my spray starch that I've sprayed into this cup and my um, stencil brush to apply it to just the seam allowance. And then I will use my hot iron to just turn that edge up over. See how the big flat part of your iron just kind of eases the edge of the fabric up over the template? I'm just going to leave my iron there long enough for the starch to dry. And I don't want to take my iron across to this other side that isn't turned because I don't want to dry that starch yet. I'm going to turn it around and then I like using a big iron because they're nice and hot. Uh, some people use a little craft iron but it takes a long time because you don't have much surface area. And see how I have a lot of surface area here so I can quickly get this all turned to the wrong side. And they get nice and hot, and that big flat side of your iron is great for easing the edge up over. Then turn it over, press it once from the other side. So now you can see that I've got a little bit of extra fabric here at the points, because that's um, whenever I've got a sharp point, I'm going to have that extra flag. Don't cut that off. Make sure you leave it. Pull out your template to use again. 
and then we're going to glue it to our block. So a little tiny drop of glue here in the seam allowance. Let's pull this block over. Let's put this leaf right here and just glue it down. Now that's ready for me to stitch. Okay, I've showed you applique the Jalili way and this is a method that you're going to enjoy because it's going to make applique easy for you. I use it on any kind of shape I'm doing, even this large giraffe. Still use the same method, cutting out the template with four pieces of freezer paper, turn the edges under with starch, and gluing it down with apple glue. Even on this, this little example here, we have a quilt that has some applique. Of course, I did the Jalili way, but I also did the scalloped edging that way. So I did the uh, cut a template for this outside scallop and just turned that edge under and the other edge I just sewed into the seam. So all of the, the tools that I use in my applique method are available on my website. They're sold separately, but they're also available in a kit called an applique kit. If you want to know how to stitch your applique, watch the next video entitled Polka Dots and I'll teach you how I stitch using a product I've developed.